Welcome to my channel. You must have watched my last video on city tour of Thimphu, the capital of Bhutan. Today, I am going to take you to the most beautiful valley in Bhutan, Phubjika, which lies around 130 kilometers from Thimphu. Not only is it a breathtaking valley, it is also famous as the winter visiting ground of the most celebrated bird of Bhutan, the black-necked cranes. The Dochula Pass is the highest point on the road connecting Thimphu with the Punakha Valley. Once you are here, it is impossible to miss the architectural grandeur of the 108 Chortans. These Chortans were built as a memorial in honor of the Bhutanese soldiers who were killed in a battle against Indian insurgents in 2003. On a clear day, the pass offers a panoramic view of the snow-clad Himalayan peaks, including Gangkar Fuensum, the highest peak of Bhutan. Just a week before, these regions had received a lot of snowfall. However, snow does melt pretty quickly at this time of the year, and we got nothing more than just a little hint of it. We gradually descended to the valley of Punakha. The valley is made fertile by the graceful Punasang River and we had a very scenic drive along it for the next half an hour. A structure that one can't miss while traveling along this river is the Wangdu Zong. It is the third oldest Zong in Bhutan and lies at the confluence of the Punasang and Dangchu rivers. It was completely ravaged by fire in 2012 and is being slowly reconstructed. We had our lunch at Nobting, a small hamlet at the base of the Lawala Pass, the gateway to the valley of Pobjika. The record books indicated that in the last few years, the black-necked cranes in Pobjika Valley had left for Tibet within the middle or end of February, and it was already the first week of March, so I was a bit skeptical about their presence during this time.
On a hilltop and overlooking the valley of Pubjika lies the 400-year-old Gangte Monastery. It is said that the cranes circle over it three times on arrival and before returning back to Tibet, as if practicing circumambulation. I was welcomed at the monastery by some friendly young lamas who will always greet you with a smiling face. As I was exploring the site, some locals showed me some tiny white dots in the valley far below. A closer look revealed the reality, and I couldn't be happier. Those were nothing but the much coveted cranes. I had very little time in my hand as sunlight was fading fast. Therefore, I almost rushed to our car and began to inquire the locals about possible ways of getting down to the valley below. After all, that was going to be a once-in-a-lifetime experience. The black-necked crane is undoubtedly the most iconic animal in Bhutanese culture and enjoys a celebrity status in Bhutan. They are one of the rarest birds in the world and only 8 to 10,000 of them exist today. Owing to the remoteness of their habitats, they were the last species of cranes to be discovered, usually found in the cold Tibetan plateau they visit remote parts of India and Bhutan in winters, and this valley is one of their last strongholds. The next morning, my plan was to get as close as possible to the birds without scaring them. The technique here is to maintain a low profile by crawling very very slowly and make them believe that you are just a part of the environment. Doing so enabled me to get some really interesting photographs. Our next destination was Punakha, the first as well as the winter capital of Bhutan.
The Puna Khazong, that is also known as the Palace of Great Bliss, was built in 1637. It is the site of crowning of the first king of Bhutan and also one of its most majestic structures. <laughs> Every year in the months of February or March, the famous Sechu festival is celebrated here in honor of Guru Rinpoche, the great saint also known as the second Buddha. The festival is characterized by dance performances that tell stories of victories of good over evil. Built over the agile Pochu or the Mel River, the Punakha suspension bridge is one of the longest in the country. It is garnished by colorful prayer flags that flutter in strong breeze as the bridge shakes and the handsome river flows below. When darkness descended over the valley, it was time to return. And the day ended on a very high note for me, as I found this spectacular architectural beauty gleaming in all its glory. <laughs> 